All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on photosynthesis and specifically going over the Calvin cycle. Let's get started on this next video. So we are now over on this side here of the chloroplast and we are looking at the light independent reactions because they don't require light in order for them to occur. However, they are going to require CO2 as an input in order to make our output of sugar. This is going to occur in the stromal space here. We're going to look at the Calvin cycle now in some more detail. Now the Calvin cycle is a cycle that plants use for chemical energy. They're going to use ATP and NADPH generated from the electron transport chain to build carbohydrates. Those are the sugars that we're going to then send to the mitochondria to eventually again make more ATP out of. Now this is named after the American scientist Melvin Calvin and that's why we call it the Calvin cycle. Let's try to understand it in some more detail and understand what is going through and occurring here and how we eventually get our carbohydrates, our sugars. So if we look at the Calvin cycle, we're going to see this in the stroma. Now we're going to see an input of three CO2 and we're using the carbon from the CO2 as the building blocks for going through and eventually creating the sugars. Remember, the sugar is C6H12O6. We're using Rubisco. It's an enzyme catabolized reaction. We're using Rubisco to make our first intermediate. That's going to be 3PGA. And we can see here that it is going to consist of three carbon groups and a phosphate here at the end. Now, this is going to be the first stage, which we call carbon fixation. We're going to take carbon dioxide molecules here, and we're going to fix them into 3PGA. Now this is going to require energy. Remember the whole point of us making that ATP and again making that NADPH, we're using three ATP and six NADPH, is to go through and allow this chemical reaction to go through in function. At the end of it, we're going to go through, reduce this, and we're going to get a G3P. We're gonna take one of these G3Ps, we're going to output it out of the Calvin cycle, and that is eventually going to turn into the sugar that we see, the glucose or the fructose, dependent upon what plant we're looking at. Now, five more of those G3P are going to go back into the Calvin cycle in order to get it to go through and continue to function. This is called the regeneration phase. So we take a G3P out, but we send five more back in in order to keep this cycle moving. That is eventually going to turn into, after we add three ATP, into RUBP, or ribulose biphosphate. We're going to get three RUBP. We're going to recombine that RUBP with this three CO2 that we initially went through and put in, and the cycle can continue. Now, this is a very, very simplified graphic and simplified uh, version of how this goes through and occurs. We see a couple short-lived intermediates. One of them is ribulose phosphate, not ribulose biphosphate. But we can see that this cycle continues, and we only take out one G3P to eventually turn into our sugar. So if we restart this cycle here, we're going to see this is an enzyme catabolized reaction. We're going to see that Rubisco is going to take our three CO2. We're going to get out six PGA in the carbon fixation phase. This is going to require energy. And remember that energy came from the electron transport chains with those light dependent reactions. What's the molecules that we're going to go through and use here? Well, we're going to use ATP and NADPH in order to go through and move into our reduction phase here. We're going to get G3P. We're going to make six of them. One of them is going to get pulled out to eventually turn into our glucose, into our C6H12O6. We're going to just take one of them out in order to keep the Calvin cycle functioning. Five of them are going to go back in. We can see that five G3P go back in here. This is again going to require some energy in the regeneration phase here. It's going to require ATP, three of them specifically. And we're going to get at the end of this our ribulose biphosphate which is then going to continue this cycle. And remember, there are short-lived intermediates in this Calvin cycle that you may learn about more in a more detailed biochemistry course. But for right now, you just have to understand the basics for the Calvin cycle. So what is our end goal and what are we trying to go through and establish here? Well, we're going to take that G3P, that glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, and eventually that is going to turn into our sugar, our glucose. Now we take that glucose in the mitochondria and we eventually go through and turn that into ATP. 
So our end goal is to go through and establish ATP and store in a more stable molecule that glucose, which we have taken the energy from via the light. So our goal is to go from G3P to glucose, store the energy chemically in the glucose, and then later turn that glucose in the mitochondria via cellular respiration into ATP. So if we try to go through and wrap this up and review it, what we're getting here is we're taking the light dependent reactions. Those are making the energy for the Calvin cycle. So they're going to make the energy for the Calvin cycle, the NADPH and the ATP, and that energy goes through and takes the CO2 and fixes the carbons via carbon dioxide eventually into the sugar that we have, the energy that we need, which is glucose. We input water, we output on the light dependent reaction side, oxygen, and on the light independent reaction side, we input CO2 and we output the sugars. So this is how we're trying to go through and understand this. Light dependent reactions provide the power to power the Calvin cycle, which makes the sugar. All of this takes place in the chloroplast. So did you learn? Well, did you learn a couple of things? Did you learn about the Calvin cycle? Did you learn about how chemical energy powers the Calvin cycle? And then lastly here, did you learn about the end result of the Calvin cycle? This is going to be the end of the video, and we'll see you all in class tomorrow.